Okay, welcome everyone. It's this is documentation office hours. It's the 12th of September, India Standard Time, 11th of September, uh, US, US time. Thanks everybody for being here. Remember, we uh, abide by the Jenkins Code of Conduct. And Diraj is here. And Kristen is here. Great. Okay. All right. So, um, oh, whoops, wrong, wrong place to even put the notes. Let's get this correct. Sorry. Okay, got it. So one topic for me might be a review of the Contributor Summit Part 2. Uh, docs without Jenkins Docs without Wiki was the topic that we had there. And uh, we've, we should probably review the 2.316 uh, Jenkins change log, right? The weekly change log. Uh, what else? Oh, oh yes, the contributing to open source workshop. I would like to review that just because Kristen, you in particular, may have some additional hints for topics. What I've, what I've discovered by creating this thing is, um, it has, I think, the potential to be a tutorial online, and I would like to talk about that idea and then cool. talk about how it might be decomposed into useful subsections of the tutorial or sub steps. Okay, and uh, identify the other is, the other thing where I think you can be especially helpful is you may be able to identify other uh, sub steps that are missing, other steps that are, that are useful, helpful, et cetera. And then we always have the option of we could uh, partition it into pieces and uh, have various ones, you know, Diraj, if you want to do, if you feel like you'd like to try to do some writing with me, you and I could do this thing together, introduce it as a blog post and a tutorial at the same time. Sounds great. Okay, so, so that's one I'd like to talk to. And then I think that's it for me. Any other topics the rest of you would like? Oh, Hacktoberfest, do we need to, we probably need to talk to that one to identify what work we need to be done, et cetera. Anything else? Okay, then let's go ahead with Jenkins Docs Without Wiki as part one. So Diraj, thanks again so much for attending the Saturday, the Saturday event. That was, that was really great. And I thoroughly enjoyed the process we used. So what we did is Diraj and I and four or five other people all got together and had a, a session of about one hour, an unconference session talking about what are we gonna do for Jenkins documentation since wiki.jenkins.io is gone and is not coming back, at least not as a Confluence server. So what we did is we talked about three, three or four stages, right? So there's what we have today, what's in progress, what, what are the alternatives and next steps? And then we had one open question or one question that came up, what if I want to help? So those were the, the ideas and we broke the, what do we have today into three things. There's www.jenkins.io, the primary documentation site. And it has lots of broken links to wiki.jenkins.io, many incomplete pages. The wiki data for that is for, for wiki.jenkins.io is now stored as HTML files on this Git repository, Confluence Data Content. And so in this Jenkins folder with 1,676 files is the content. So for example, if I open the one I was just using was this one, Ansible plugin. Here it is as HTML. And then if I clone this repository, run it locally, I can actually open it and read the file. And so it's usable. So we've got the data. It's just not yet presentable to users. Then plugins. So any questions on, on that first part of the what we have today? Oops. Okay, next part of what we have today then is 
plugins.jenkins.io. And yes, it is the primary plugin documentation site and we intend for it to continue that way, right? It will, it will remain that and should remain that way. Good search services, excellent data coming from it, great development work done by Gavin Mogan and Spinak Konechny. And, and the result is a very usable site for people who are interested in, in all things about specific plugins. Now, the challenge there is that many of the pages of the plugin site, for example, this Ansible one I was just navigating to, uses content from an exported copy of wiki.jenkins.io. This plugin Wikidocs is the plugin documentation pages exported as um, Markdown. So to the example I showed earlier, here's the Ansible page exported as Markdown. And this, while, while certainly better than nothing, is not final plugin documentation and really needs, needs people to migrate the content into their GitHub repositories. Any questions on plugins.jenkins.io? Okay, then the last piece is the pipeline steps reference. And again, thanks very much to Kristen for this one. The pipeline steps doc generator that reads all the plugins, extracts their documentation and publishes it. And there was this Google Summer of Code project idea that recommends ways we might improve the layout and the navigation. Then there was the, the She Code Africa project. We should put a link to that, shouldn't we? The She Code Africa contribute on here. This thing that we we did to improve that. And it reminded us that there's an enormous long way yet to go on that project. So those were the, the three sort of looks at what we've got today. Any comments or corrections or concerns there? Nice okay. summary, by the way, I like. Well, it, so it was part of, part of this exercise was I had not created this summary until actually in the meeting. And so, or just minutes before it. And, and the act of creating the summary helped me sort of focus because now it's the what's in progress topic. Right. And some things that we might like to be in progress are actually not. And, and they're not in progress. And we have to just, uh, to me, I think we should just acknowledge the reality that we'd like them to be in progress, but they aren't. And, and acting like they are in progress is not going to, is not going to make anybody believe it. Right. The, right? If they're not making progress, yeah. they're not making progress. So Hacktoberfest definitely is making progress, right? And, uh, and that's, that's very positive. So we've got a, a, a project right now to migrate more plugin docs and we should probably link to that wiki migration page, right? Where is my, where did I put that sheet? Is this it? No, this is the old sheet. Okay, just a minute. I've got to go find it because it needs to be linked in here as well. But what we have is a, a sheet. Here we go. This is the sheet. This Hacktoberfest 2021 plugin sheet where Deepak Gupta has done one, Rajan Singh has done one. Uh, I've done a few, Wojtek Jurenek has done, et cetera. So, and Diraj has done one. So, so we've, we've actually, of the 40 plugins that were selected, we've made progress on five or six already. And, and that's, that's encouraging. So, so that's one of the projects that's running right now. And, and yeah, so we've got the, the, high, the high use plugins are already migrated. And some set of plugins will probably never migrate because their last release was 10 years ago and they don't have an active maintainer and their installed base is small enough. It just doesn't matter. 
we've got an active project to improve the Jenkins architecture description. I've got to show you this one, by the way. This thing is a thing of beauty that Angelique Jard has done. You've got to see it in the developer documentation. So in the reference documentation under architecture, look at this picture. Oh my. Isn't that a thing of beauty? And, and it really is an accurate description reviewed by people like Jesse Glick and others to say, yeah, that's actually, and Tim Jacome reviewed it and said, well, hey, what about this attribute and that? And, and she's got another diagram just that's somewhat like this one right now done in just pure ASCII, to ASCII art. Oh, wow. And it, it is just a beautiful thing to look at that and realize, oh yeah, okay, this is where this, and, and to say, I, I actually recognize many of those lines and why they're drawn <laughs> that way. <laughs> no, this is, this is really, really cool. It also shows you all the different, like it's all the, why sometimes it can be so complex too, right? Like this is right. where everything is going. So yeah. I really like this. This is. Yeah. Well, and, and okay. There are things like, oh, this optional corporate proxy over here is an entire world of the, right. what does it mean to be behind a corporate proxy server and how complicated can life get behind a corporate proxy? And 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 then, okay, the, the integration layers of, yes, you can do API, you can do end user. And notice this little box up here. I've got to zoom in on that. The usage statistics box. This is one that Tim Jacome reminded saying, mm. hey, usage statistics actually come from the, the user's web browser. <laughs> and and it's like oh yeah right of course and and so it it reminds that hey this is an interestingly sophisticated system yeah so this is this is Angelique's Hacktoberfest contribution I, I she may she may be frustrated with me because I merged it today I had seen enough comments and enough approvals I said this thing's going in I I want it there. She's still got to store the source code for it and some other things, but I just absolutely wanted that so we didn't we could show it around. It's such a beautiful thing. Really. So this one is the network diagram, and I don't think the component interactions one has been merged yet. Or no, maybe actually maybe it has. Just a minute, let's take a look. Well, web framework extensions. Don't remember where it is actually. Request routing, no. I'll have to go looking for it further. But but there's a second with actually let's let's find it. That's why we have pull requests. So here. Ah, okay. It's not it's not published yet. Got it. But it's very nice to, all we have to do is do a, like this, because thanks to the magic of GitHub and ASCII doc, this is how it will render. Oh, wow. And, and this is trying to show the, the, the layer, the architectural layers inside the software. So XML, Xtreme for XML processing, various scheduling and models, then the, the page routing framework called Stapler and the communication protocol routing, remoting that's used to talk to the agents, web and HTTP both coming through Stapler, a command line. It's, yeah. Uh-oh. Okay, that one needs to be fixed. Or the, although, no, I checked that. And I don't think, well, I'll have to double check this one. This one may need a link colon slash slash Marco. Okay, so that again shows us where we're at. And this one, let, let me look at, let's grab that pull request. Okay, and there's further work happening by folks inside CloudBees to make even more progress on developer documentation. So, so really delighted with that. Then Meg, your work on the security documentation. And I didn't put the list of PRs there, uh, but you've got a list of PRs that you're using to guide that work. Right, yes. Now, security docs are a, a, an, an area where Meg has the added benefit that 
they won't be merged until we get approval from members of the security team. One of the things we've accepted on the Jenkins.io site is that security team review is required for things we write in the security section. So Meg, your point that you need to ask Daniel to approve absolutely holds. I won't merge anything without at least one member of the security team giving an approval to things that are in the security section. Okay, and is that how it goes? Do you do the actual merge? Uh, they can do it or I can do it. Okay. It doesn't, it doesn't require me to do it. But if, if we, for instance, take your, let's see, where was it? Let's take your, let's look at your recent stack scrub. Oh, maybe yours has been merged already? No. Oh, like it would help if I spelled correctly. Just a minute. Okay. Rem here we go. So this is the one that's pending. Remove the reference to Jenkins1.x. Yeah. So uh, Gavin Mogan and Oleg are great reviewers, wonderful to have. This one, because Daniel said yes, is approved to merge and I've merged it. Okay. But ah, without so Daniel's, mer without Daniel's approval, there. I would not have merged it because right. if you look, there is, oh no, it doesn't show it here. Why not? Maybe this one, no, it should see, this should have been labeled. If I remember correctly, it should have been labeled security. And I thought it was automatically labeled that way, but maybe not. So, so what there is, is I think we had put in place safeguards that security team has to review anything in the security section. Okay. Go to 4612. 4612. Okay. I've only got one PR out there because I realized I had a slight issue, but. Okay. See, that's mine. Right. And that's where I got the comment to remove the 1.x stuff. Oh, and that's yeah. why I just looked and it disappeared. Oh, yeah. And the that plus one for removal. This is Tim Jacome is, right. is yeah. he's the release officer. So oh, okay. absolutely very, very good, well-versed. Um, he's not a member of the security team, but he is the release officer. So he's very capable with Jenkins and Jenkins development. Right. Okay. So, but now I know why. Now I just went to look and it was missing. I've been wondering, I was going to, so I don't need to move that. I remove that. I'll do a pull and. Yeah. Possibly so, deal with any merge conflicts and then I'm set. Okay. And and this one you see here, it says J Daniel reviewed on behalf of Jenkins and Infra slash security. This is this is that code owners thing where when you submit something into a secure one of the security the security tree, uh -huh. it will place security info over here or security team, is it secure Jenkins slash security? Jenkins dash in for slash security will be listed over here as one of the reviewers. Okay. All right. So good positive, positive thing there. And and onward we go. Yeah. So that's 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 the I think of that as the the most active thing right now is Hacktoberfest. Then the one that we discussed, but that is that is absolutely inactive, is wiki migration. These are the non-plugin pages um, migrating to. Let's see, no, how does this? Yeah, so migrating non-plugin wiki pages, and the problem we see there is that it needs. It's not just. Whereas plugin migration is a mostly mechanical effort copy something from existing document, place it in a new location, create a pull request, do some minor changes, et cetera. Um, this one, we've hit the point where most of the things that we might bring in that were that kind of mechanical migration are already done. The new migrations need careful thought by someone who is skilled in use of Jenkins and understands its history and its structure. And therefore, we can't just put it as a Hacktoberfest project. It's not viable. If anything, it makes things worse when we do that because then we get large submissions that are questionable accuracy and unclear, et cetera. Do we the have other... a mapping of those to where they would go? And specifically, well, I'm one, there's pages in Jenkins IO that say, you know, we need help here that have no content. Are do, how do we know if maybe some of those there's content available in the wikis? Yeah, and, and so that's, that's one of the projects that needs an expert. We okay. had a beginning of that, but only a beginning. And the, the effort 
for me, that's, that's almost a, we need to gather a group of three or four of us together physically in a room, in a room, put information on three by five cards and start shuffling and stacking and sorting and prioritizing them. Okay. And, and I just, I, I would love to do that, but right now I haven't got the capacity to do it. And so it's, it's for me, it's waiting to like pause them or something like that, right. where we might actually get physically together. Yeah. Yeah, I was wondering, is like, man, that sounds like maybe we could break it up over these meetings where it's like, it's time boxed. We can time oh, box it. That's but like, a... and that, that way it's like, okay, like maybe we don't have a lot of time, but like, you know, office hours or something, like we're going to take the next, like, I, it, it's probably going to take a while. There's a lot going on. And I can assume that some of this stuff is also probably going to be superseded by that demo. Like some of it might be superseded by the updated developer documentation right maybe I, I totally agree like i this is one of those things would be really great to be able to be in person and or like at a conference like being able to do a hackathon like at the like i think they've done it before i've never i've never been able to go to any of the jenkins conferences but that stuff but I, maybe there's a we can time box some stuff or do some stuff in these meetings where we just say like all right the office hours this week are going to be focused on um, sorting or <laughs> right just a, right like a small section i don't know well i think i think that's an inspiring idea actually to consider consider making a a fixed portion of each office hours as processing for um some portion of wiki.jenkins.io content I like right that. because that might be a, a great way to just say look we're going to create a giant sheet and we're going to do one row at a time and we'll yeah. spend the time we need and then we'll do the next row and we'll see progress by that. And we could actually create issues out of that that would be out there for people to find if they were right. looking for something to do, right? Right. If if we're if the output is something we're confident is worth worth an issue, absolutely we could. I right. my initial is there, there are things where I fear putting an issue out there. Somebody would think, oh, it's now a mechanical guide, a mechanical thing, I can just do it. And uh, okay. then we end up with a lovely copy of something that's got so many errors in it that it's just not helpful. Right. Gotcha. All right. So, so the wiki migration, good, good observation. Then the SheCode Africa Pipeline Steps Improvement Project so Kristen and Meg and Oleg and Angelique all helped as mentors on this project back in March, Diraj. And what we did was we ran them through a, a series. It was a month long project where these women in at five women in Africa were paid to assist with Jenkins development. And so we ran them through a series of steps where they compiled a plugin, modified online help that's inside the plugin, added new online help inside the plugin and submitted pull requests. And, and the project was instructive for us and certainly for them as well, but there's still an awful lot yet to do on it. So, so those were, and, and, but it's, this is paused until March of 2022 is the next time we would likely start a SheCode Africa project again. Oh, okay. Now, one of the challenges here and one of the embarrassing challenges is that the problem has not been money. The biggest challenge was not getting some companies to donate to fund this. It was getting enough mentors in an open source project to be willing to help for the month. And again, thanks to Kristen and to Meg for having been willing to do that. Is this something that could we like some are some of the plugins that need this maintained by people who work for companies of the Cloudbees and others? Is that something they, that we could go and at request the company? Could you give us a month of mentoring from so and so for this project? We we could. The last time I tried that, it didn't fly. Right. Okay. So, so yes, we, that, there's, that doesn't stop us from doing it in the future. Mm -hmm. We absolutely can and certainly should ask for, ask for um, one, of the, one of the observations for, of what didn't go well here was we did not enlist the reviewers. So we ended up receiving pull requests that did not ultimately reach the plugin because we didn't have reviewers. 
Right. So, so yes, that's, that's certainly part. And, and that was one of the things that inspired this sheet in the, in the, where is that sheet? This one, this sheet is specifically because of the things we saw with SheCode Africa Contributhon. I didn't want anybody working on documentation migration for a plugin in Hacktoberfest that then wouldn't get a code review. So each of these that say will review, it's because the maintainer of the plugin replied to me in an email and said, yes, I will review a docs pull request and I will release the plugin after having merged it. All right. Now, one of those, this one is, is the notable exception. I started this one as the experiment before and it turns out they haven't merged it yet. So, all right. So any, any questions on the what's in progress then? Or any things I've missed on what's in progress? I have two questions. Yes. So first question is like, I'm trying, I want to know uh, when you'll be uh, putting the label of Hacktoberfest or in the PR, because uh, until you do that, uh, only after that will be uh, the contributors will be able to see their pull request in the Hacktoberfest website has been counted. I, th I thought that if the repository was was recorded as a Hacktoberfest topic, like this one, for instance, let's go there and be sure that it is. So see this this topic over here for Hacktoberfest? Yes. That, as far as I can tell, means that all pull requests accepted to this one, all pull requests merged, are counted immediately. So have yours not been counted yet, Diraj? Yes, so it says that total completed PR zero in progress zero. And below that it says you've submitted Hacktober Fest. Uh, you have submitted and then the title of my PR that is move documentation to Jenkins deploy plugin. So after that, it says that project not participating. Okay, but that's and, and so let's look at that one. Very good question. So that uh, that I'll one give you the link. What sorry, what was that? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I just saying I can give you the link if you don't have. Oh, that's okay. I've got it. I think anyway, I think it's this one. Yes, yes. Okay, so this one should have okay, it has been merged now. And it mentioned and you said, but you say this has not appeared. Yes, it says the project is not participating. Okay, all right. So then what we need to do here is we need to, we need to ask him. Could you label this pull request as Hacktoberfest or as Hacktoberfest fest dash accepted so that Dira, so that Dira Shoda will be credited on the Hacktoberfest site for the, the, the merged pull request. Thanks for detecting that because I thought that the mention of the word Hacktoberfest in the in the the text would be enough, but apparently if it's not counting in yours, then they need to label that as Hacktoberfest. Yeah, right, that makes sense. Okay. So we might want to do the same procedure for I think all the contributions that we have received till now. So that uh, the contributor also get motivated uh, seeing their pull request being counted. And, and I agree wholeheartedly, I think mm -hmm. though, and now I'm going to now I'm going to, we're going to do a double check. Let's see if I can find it. Digital Ocean. There it is, Hacktoberfest. Yes. Now, how do I find my status? You need I'm, to click on start hacking. Uh, on, the button. Start hacking. Oh, start hacking. Okay, yes. thank you. Good. So now it will be refreshed and you can see. A 10 in progress. And there you can see the status of the PR below. Oh, okay, good. So these, and so these are time for control. 
Interesting. Update parent. Okay, and this one. Okay, so this one. Let's let's open that one because this one is now closed. Let's find another one though because I am going to label this one Hacktoberfest. I am now a I'm now a maintainer of this plugin. I asked to adopt it, <laughs> and so I'm going to take advantage of my my asking having asked to adopt it, and I am going to edit the labels and give myself a new label called Hacktoberfest. Okay, Hacktoberfest by DigitalOcean. Which color shall we make it? That's a good color. Okay, now back to that pull request. Oktoberfest, and we'll now see if that will eventually be detected. Okay, and then, oh, that's good. So this one, this one, notice it says Jenkins-infra.jenkins.io. It matures in 10 days. It's not been labeled Hacktoberfest, but because the repository has the topic Hacktoberfest, all pull requests merge to account. So that makes sense. So, so anything you submit, Diraj, to Jenkins.io counts towards it. Mm -hmm. And then others, the same story, right? So now this one, node label parameter. Okay, that's odd. I thought that the Git plugin was participating. Oh, no, it's not. Okay, so, and I don't know that I actually want particularly to make it participating because it's complicated submitting changes to the Git plugin. But yeah, and the others are, are not, there's not actually enough useful in them to, to justify it. Cool, that's a much better presentation than we've had in past years. Oh, okay, here's a pro pro point of pride for me. This one is not labeled Hacktoberfest, but because the Docker project has Hacktoberfest in it, it's counted. Good. So Diraj, did that, did that address, address your question? Yes, totally. So we can do the same thing, like asking the maintainers to put the label for other participants as well, contributors. Correct, right. And, uh, yep, so about Jenkins.io, you were saying if we submit anything there, it will be counted towards the contribution. So mm -hmm. you were saying about the blog that we can write together. So we can do that uh, if you have any time. Yes, I, I, exactly. Well, and, and there it will be important that you are the one who submits it rather than having me submit it because that way it, it, it shows up correctly accounted for your, your doing it. So I'll likely assemble some text and we can talk together about how, we, how you submit it. Yes, sure. That could be great. All right. And, uh, and, and one last question is that uh, there is a link which talks about how to work first swag list and it lists out all the companies that are giving out some goodies to the contributors. So I was wondering how we see that as an option. Although it's too late for us to participate there, I've shared the link for you. Okay, let me grab that link. So at this point, I haven't, I haven't received any commitment from any suppliers who'd be willing to do swag for Hacktoberfest particularly giving the typically high volume that Hacktoberfest generates. Okay. Oh. Okay. Let's see. And I don't think that, um, that Alyssa has put CloudBees on this as an example. No, she has not. Okay. Yes, the number is huge because one of the project's task was to clone it, uh, Disney or any kind of Hulu clone, and they received uh, 300 PRs as of now. So, definitely. <laughs> so, yeah, this is a big investment. 
Well, well, and that's that's something. It's let me put an action item for me. Um, maybe it goes into the docs notes here. So um, discuss with Mark. Discuss with discuss stickers. Cloudbees shipping stickers to top. You know to the first. 50 or um, merged Hacktoberfest con contributors to the Jenkins project, right? So there, she and I talked about stickers because stickers we can place into an envelope and mail, whereas t-shirts, the, the shipping problems for t-shirts are sort of legendary. Okay. So yeah, that, this was my question. Thanks. Great. OK. Excellent. All right. Now, are there other of your submissions, Diraj, that we need to we need to send reminders on? Uh, not exactly mine, just one of my friends, as you uh, yeah, read from the sheet, Rajan Singh. Mm -hmm. So submitted a PR and it's yet to be merged and reviewed okay, by well, you. And let me, let's, let's just go ahead. Oops, wrong one. Let's pick that. And let's, let me just do a reminder to the, uh, to the maintainer because there's no reason we should not um, remind the maintainer that um, they agreed to, to do the review. All right, now we got to find out who the maintainers are. Jessica. Oh, Ivan Sugonyak. Okay, great. All right. So let's go back there. Okay, so Ivan. I'm not sure if it's no. There we go. This is ready is ready to review and merge. Could you please be sure that you label the pull request Hacktoberfest so that it will count for Rajan Singh's There we go, great. And, oh, and I haven't reviewed it yet. Okay, so I still owe him a review. Yes. Oh, that looks good to me. Yes, absolutely, it's correct, approved. Okay, good, thank you. Sorry, it was, it's been six days a week since he submitted it. Shame on me for not reviewing it faster. <laughs> no problem. What do you do with all your spare time, Mark? Exactly. That is a very good question, Meg. Oops. Hang on. Okay. So back to where we were. So we've talked about what's in progress with Hacktoberfest and Wiki Migration and SheCode. Then what we were trying to do, remember that the theme of this, this session was docs without the wiki. So it's what do we do about these set of problems we've got described up here, like many broken links to wiki.jenkins.io, many plugins that haven't migrated documentation to GitHub, um, et cetera. And so the, the primary focus was on this one. How do we deal with the broken links to wiki.jenkins.io right now? And so first topic was for plugin docs, that's easy. Do the, do the work we're doing of migrating plugin docs. That's, that's healthy, it works. We understand how to do it, it's just a machinery thing. The general purpose docs, oops, will just have to, and so here the choices are, okay, there's, there are, for instance, pages that are very, very useful still in the wiki. And the thought was we could just host them at a static location. 
and eventually, over time, migrate them. What I've got right now is I've got more to report here that um, Hervé Lemieux on my team at work is investigating a technique, a map, a technique to map old URLs from the wiki to new URLs in some other location, small service, something like that, that would just alias one thing to another at the web, at the HTTP request level. The other idea was we could host the static HTML pages as GitHub pages. Now, right now, they, they are not named the same as they were on the wiki. So, so that doesn't solve the whole problem, but it does avoid us having to pay any hosting costs. We don't see the bandwidth charges because GitHub pages host for free. And uh, one of the participants noted it, they can be the exact static web pages that we have right now. And we could even assign a custom domain like wiki.jenkins.io to the pages. And that will pick up graphics as well as text. It 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 will, yeah. So, for example, the, uh, the let's see if I could I could show it probably best by doing it from my local computer. So, forgive the Windows command prompt. So here is my local copy, and I'm going to jump to, let's look at that Ansible page that I was using. There we go, this one. And I'm just gonna double click it, and here it is. And this is how it would look to the user that's reading it. It's a very reasonable web page, styled to look like the wiki used to look. Yeah, nice. So, and many of the hyperlinks still work. Uh, many of them do not. And that's that's just one of the, the prices we pay here. So the plugin site, for instance, this one does work. But the links here that are pointing to wiki.jenkins.io would not work unless we put this exactly at the uh, the same location as it was before. Well, sorry, here we are 50 minutes into the hour and I'm still blathering on this one topic. We probably should stop uh, me from, from squandering everybody's time here. Yeah, You've this heard... is a good one. This is a really good one. Okay, so so that's the those are the ideas, but we've got to do some development work to get there because right now the Confluence, the Confluence data repository is not yet set up to do GitHub pages. And even if it were, it's not, it's not, we're not mapped to their correct final destination. So Hervé's work is, is good and useful there. So I propose we get off this thing. We've got, we've got to do this, the review of the change log. We've got lots of other things we need to do in the 10 minutes we have left. Yes. Any objections? None. Yeah, I think we can. Okay, so then let's let's take on the next topic and go look at the change log for two point three hundred sixteen. Diraj, had you had you had any chance to do any looking at it yet? Uh, not yet, actually. I was okay, good. So let's look at it together. This is perfect. Then we'll we'll review it as a group here. And so this is, oh, oh dear. So I didn't satisfy the formatting even when I did it, shame on me. Okay, so tell a story first. Notice this red block here. What happened was last, last week when we did the security release, 
this was out was indented two spaces less than it is even right now and as such was not rendered correctly notice that the automated formatting in the change log has pushed it out two more spaces so it's fixed even more the mistake that i made but at least the mistake i made was rendering correctly so now we need to look at 2.316 here's big text everybody All right, so um, Diraj, what do you think? Bump the spotless Maven plugin that should probably be listed as skip change log, shouldn't it? Yes. yes. Okay, so let's go find the uh, Jenkins core pull requests. And it was PR number this. And it was not labeled skip change log, but it should be. Because there's no way a user should care that we upgraded the formatting plugin. Okay, so fix that one. Now the next 5779, update the French translation in the legend. Okay, I don't know what in the legend means. So let's go look at that one. Okay, update the French translation. What do you think in the legend? Okay, read the bug report. Maybe that'll tell us what the legend means. Icon legend. Like descriptions oh. for each different icons, right? Yeah, so it seems like it's another page inside of Jenkins. Oh, I hmm. didn't know that such a page even existed. So, yeah, me either. So is this an... <laughs> icon map what is this okay so so now i got to bring up my jenkins and see how that looks see i love that there are all these things that were built in that it's, it's sometimes like there's so many things that jenkins can do that you don't need. <laughs> right <laughs> exactly yeah so that's that's just a thing of beauty okay maybe i should check with my other one. Oh no it's not up either shame on me just a minute while i start it Okay, but so uh, since it calls it legend, Docker, oh, I see what's going on. It got killed because I was doing some other stuff with Docker. Okay, got it. And there it is. Okay, so it'll be up in a minute or two. Okay, so. Update the French translation in the oh so what if we use the phrase in the icon descriptions or in the icon descriptions page? I think so. I'm not sure. Meg would help us. I think. Like legend is also. Uh, an official term for this it, it is right so it, this is actually accurate right it's legend is the sense of it's used on a map mm -hmm. to describe mm -hmm. describe things like that so it's maybe we just leave it and say yep that's ready to go um, okay so i'm going to go ahead with that we're going to say yes that one's sufficient let's keep it next one then. And stop. Oh, oh oh yep up you're right exactly thank you good Okay, so let's put that full stop in it. Okay, got it. Okay. Display the full plugin name and link when a plugin fails to load. My sense is that one's okay just as is. Uh, display full plugin name and link when a plugin fails to load. So this, I'm being I, mi I missed what you said. So go ahead and say that again. So do you want to put a comma after a link or I'm being extra? Okay, good question. I was, so put a comma here after yes. that word. I don't know, I'm not good at English. Yeah, so, so my sense was no, but, but oh, it's, it's valid question. Meg or Kristen? 
do we need a comma in there in the phrasing? I don't think so. Okay, so I and I, that was my tendency was yeah. Okay, okay so, so we we stay with that one. Now we've got the next one is five seven five five better reporting of errors for certain kinds of bugs in computer listeners. No objections from me. Corrections from others. No. Um. I might say improve improvements in error reporting, but I don't know, maybe that's just preference. I don't know if it's necessary. Okay, so. I've improved error reporting for certain kinds of bugs. Okay, so. so but it just seems less awkward. Improve yeah. error reporting for certain kinds of bugs in computer listeners like that. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Okay. Got it. All right. Next one then. Upgrade. This one has an interesting complication. The message includes a hyperlink that is in markdown format. Ah. And I don't think that will render correctly because at least here it's it's putting the, the literal markdown in there. So I think we may have to go in and fix this one afterwards. Although, yeah, so how, okay, maybe what we do here is let's, let's take out the hyperlinks. And And then in reviewers, links. So in the references. section of the change log, right? Because I don't know how to do that from here. And so what I'm gonna do is take this out, pipeline API. I'm gonna just take out the hyperlink. Does that seem okay to everybody? Will you know where to get it back when you wanna put it back in? Yeah, or? that's why I put it down below. Oh, okay, I see, okay. I just don't know how else to do it to transmit the concept of a reference. And so down here in the desired uh -huh. reviewers, we've got a note that says, hey, be sure you fix this in the change log. Right. Diraj, what do you think? Is that an okay way to approach it? Should we do something different? I think we can do this this way. Okay, all right. So that one we've touched and then 5757 support fix. It's a developer fix. Okay, I haven't seen this one. Oh, oh, so this really is developer bug fix. Okay, and we've now reviewed the change log. So back to this, what do you think? Is that okay? Should we phrase it somehow differently for developers? Oh, we need to add, I think the category or type uh, as developer as well. Oh, interesting. Yeah, how did this not get categorized as developer? What's, what's the technique we use to categorize? Do, oh, we need a label here probably? Is that what it is? 
Yes. Yes. So that thank you for catching that, Diraj. I had missed that. That is that was that's a crucial thing because the text here says it's developer, but the label did not. And so it would not have been correctly classified as a developer issue. Good. Right. Okay. Hey guys, I had to do this, but I've got a hard stop. I gotta get to the airport. All right. Thanks, Meg. Thanks for your okay. help and good luck Thanks, with your Meg. travels. Talk to you next week. No, I'm getting yeah. rid of Tom. That's all. <laughs> oh, oh, well, tell Tom we all said hello. <laughs> okay. Take care. Yes. We'll talk next week. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay. So that seems okay to you, Diraj. We've got that corrected. Thanks for detecting that. Okay. Yes, looks good. Okay. Great. And then the others, these are items that were, were developer that were tagged as skip change log. Look through them and see if you spot any that are incorrectly classified that way. Uh, the security weekly, do you want that to be commented as well? No, this one is intentionally hidden because it was included already in 2.315. Okay. So this is just a merge to make 2.315 visible in master branch and later. Okay. So I intentionally hit this one because 2.316 is not a security release. Okay. Good question. Sure. Very good question. Had had exactly that conversation here. Let's go there. We had exactly that conversation in the pull request itself where I think it was Tim Jacome asked, should this be in the... Uh, no, maybe not. Somebody asked me that question. Oh, I remember it was somebody internal at work asked me, hey, should this be should this be in the change log? And my answer was no, because it was already in the 2.315 change log. Okay. So other than that, I think the comments are good. All right. So now we need so we need to hope that there will be one more pull request merged to Jenkins core so that it gets reprocessed. How about we take a quick look and see if there's already something we can say should be merged to core. Is there anything that's marked ready to merge? Ready for merge. Squash merge me. Okay, well, actually we should probably look at these while we're here because any one of these could be merged and let's be sure that they, they say things that make sense. So in this case, it's skip change log. So that's fine. And has this one already been marked as approved two days ago? Marked as ready for merge. So I think we can safely merge it. Any objections if I merge it? It's got all the no. right pull. Yeah, I'm merging it. Yep, sounds good. Okay, good. So now let's go back to the ready for merge. Okay, from James Nord, mark the cookie as secure. Okay, so here's one that probably will be merged. Screen resolution cookie has the secure flag when Jenkins is running on HTTPS. So we need to put a hard stop at the end of that line. And uh, shouldn't S be capitalized as well? Okay. Yes, I think you're right. Good, yep. Looks good. Okay, and is this one, see this one, this one feels to me like it should be internal, but it really does affect users. So yeah, leave it, leave it. It's, it, I don't think it should be hidden. Right, and, I was like, this seems like it should be mentioned. Right, and, and it shouldn't be listed as internal because users can perceive exactly this. Yes. So it seems like, okay, so let's go through the checklist. So the JIRA issue is well described. Yes. 
There's no external dependency. Okay, are there two approvals? There are, Vadak and Tim. Conversations are over, or it is explicit that a reviewer is not. Okay, Tim marked it ready for merge two days ago. So this one is, oh, but it's still got some checks in progress. Okay. Okay, so conversations are over, change log entries are correct, mm -hmm. labels are set, no additional upgrade steps, and no need, to, I don't know about the back port. I'm gonna leave that one unchecked. I didn't get a sense from reading it if James feels like it needs to be back ported. Right, I, yeah, I, seeing this discussion doesn't look like it should be, but, or it doesn't sound like it's an immediate urgent yeah it's it, it's not like it's a security issue so it's right it's not hot that way let's look to see if the build is making progress so why did oh this... so we do we like add a tag and it kicks something off because that's yeah. recent right that that's very that's just seconds ago yeah. and i don't understand why because because i didn't think that i'd changed anything and yet yeah absolutely so let's Weird. see if oh oh wait a sec maybe it's yeah look what happened it detected that these are changes to the pipeline shared library oh, okay and they did they do change the build they could change the build and therefore they need to be reevaluated. okay so well, two hours from now we can yeah. hope that tim will merge this one. yeah i was like oof, that's kind of a it's like unfortunately not something right. we're going to be able that's, to do right now. <laughs> that's an expensive, expensive thing. That well, actually, I, I I want to try Launchable's product or several others to see if we could reduce the time we waste running tests that aren't going to tell us anything new. Yeah. Okay, but this one we're okay with the the description as it is. Diraj, yes. that work for you? Okay, great. Okay. Then let's look at other labels ready for, okay. F update the French tan translation. This one, I just don't know, but I trust that Tim or somebody else will approve it. It's got two native French speakers who reviewed it. Um, Angelique and Vadek are both native French speakers as far as I know. You got a lot of approvals, I think. Oh, good, okay. So, and it's it's running the checks again. Okay, so when Tim wakes up, he'll see things are, have been through the checks. Okay, two approvals, conversations done. We've reviewed the change log entry and it looks good to me. Proper labels are set, yes. And it does not need upgrade steps and it doesn't need the backboard. Okay, good. All right, so we reviewed that one. We have to remember this, by the way. This is this the reviewing ready for merge is a great way to to get ahead of some changes that are likely going to merge. Mm. Okay, so Jenkins fix ongoing build from disappearing from. Okay, help me with the phrasing on this one. I know it needs the hard stop. That's the easy part. So, wait, okay. Uh, fix. fix the ongoing. Fix, is it, yeah, you could like fix disappearing ongoing build from build history. Ongoing. Right. <laughs> yeah, or is, is, it, yeah. is it make the ongoing build remain visible in build history? Do we take the word fix out and phrase it as something that's not not fixed, but rather make it visible again? Yeah, say display ongoing build. Ooh, ooh display. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so display ongoing build like in, in build history. Yeah. Is it is that already? And then we could say where it was a regression in 2.314. Cool. Yes. Yes. That's a great good way to indicate that it's 
a, was a bug. Yeah. Yes. yes. Does, and does that seem reasonable? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so then we have two approvals. Conversations have stopped. Change log entries we've reviewed. Change log labels are set. No additional upgrade steps are necessary. And no, no, if it, the if on backport is not okay. 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 And I think we're ready to commit that to say yes, update that comment. Okay, great. And that should also help us. So this gives, this says Tim is, Tim can do merges in the next three or four hours of the things that are ready for merge and they'll be in 2.316 and we think they'll look good in the automated change log. Oh, oh, and this should let us see already that our changes we'd earlier done are now, yes, there it is. Good, okay, so that one that we merged caused this to be regenerated and here it is. Excellent, thank you, everybody. Yes, thanks, looks very good. Okay, so I think we've covered the topics that we had intended to. Maybe, Diraj, if you would be, oh no, actually, Kristen, you are the one I wanted to beg for help on this one. If you'd be willing separately to look at, sure. at the, the steps in this thing, could, could you stand for me to do a five minute quick overview of this, yeah, sure. of this yeah. thing that I'd like your, I, I'm sorry to be going so badly over, but <laughs> this was one I really would love your, your help on or insights on. Yeah, this is cool because I think that this would be, I'm looking at this as like, man, this would be such an interesting thing to run as like, maybe in the future, like as a, um, like in the month or so before. Okay, yeah, say like, oh, right. Yeah, say, or like, you know, like do, if you wanted to, cause I know I mentioned you wanted to like roll it out. I was like, man, it'd be interesting to run this before like a contribute thought, like a contribute thought, or like if there was like any type of conference, like you could, we could roll it out as like a getting started program, but also it's a good workshop too. Okay, I'll let you talk now. So well, <laughs> exactly. And, and see, this is even something we might consider using this for She Code Africa instead mm -hmm. of um, uh, instead of the pipeline thing or in addition okay. to it, because this is, this is also an end to end experience for a new contributor. Sure. They can, they can start from, gee, I've never done any of this and, and go through. And by the end of it, they have made significant and valuable contributions to at least one Jenkins plugin. Mm -hmm. And they're in fact, by the time they reach the end of this, by the time they reach page 18 or so, they are really ready to adopt the plugin. That's awesome. Because they've been through four or five pull requests. They've they've shown clear clear progress, etc. I mean, it's it's that kind of oh yeah, this this really is. You could stop anywhere along the way, but if you go all the way, you have done enough steps that you probably are ready to adopt the plugin. Right. Okay. Okay. So let me put a link to this into the notes. And the crucial thing for me here was that, that what, what I wanted, what I was trying to do was find ways for people to contribute. And what I realized was there are a series of steps that you can take on a plugin that modernize it. And these steps are, are needed in many, many cases because the plugins are in various states of, of maintenance or non-maintenance. So the first story is choose one of the hundred plus plugins that are up for adoption. And, and that's, you can find those at plugins here. And if we pick one that's up for adoptions like the schedule build plugin, it has a label over here, adopt this plugin. Mm -hmm. Here are 110 plugins that are up for adoption. Pick one of these and that's interesting to you and start doing these steps. First, be sure it has a Jenkins file. Okay, next, mm -hmm. update the parent POM to the current parent POM version. 
this one already gave me gave me improvements on the one I adopted, schedule build, because with that, when I did this one, I suddenly was able to compile with Java 11. Oh, yeah, Whereas yeah. prior to this, I had to use Java 8. So I've, I've already, with one step, improved the plugin. Nice. Th then update the base Jenkins version. And this one is where Jenkins, the, the current Palm now has this concept that you declare what the base Jenkins version is, the minimum Jenkins version you'll support. Mm -hmm. And we have a page on Jenkins.io that recommends a specific base version number. And right now it's this one, 2.289.1. So again, that one now has narrowed the breadth of things, versions they're supporting and is helping the plugin maintainer. Let's make life simpler. Okay, now the, it, and it just keeps going from there. Okay, so next stop was enable more spot bugs checks. So by default, spot bugs is enabled. I turned it up from the default level to threshold low, effort high. So maximum involvement of spot bugs. And okay, once again, if you now fix any warnings that came from that, that's helped the plugin update the SCM URL was one that many people may not be aware of. Git, GitHub is obsoleting this protocol. Ooh, okay. They are deprecating it. And so we have to replace it with HTTPS. It's work, somebody's got to do it. Then use Dependabot to update Depend, automate, automate dependency updates, enable incremental delivery so that we can, we can test builds easier. This one, this last one, Kristen, the mm -hmm. convert AP, this was one that I discovered while watching Sasha do work on a plugin he was, oh, cool. he was doing these steps on. What he, what he showed was, oh yeah, here's this big plugin. In his case, he was working on the white source plugin. Inside that plugin, there is a dependency on the AWS SDK, 20 or 30 megabyte jar file wow. that gets packaged inside the plugin. But guess what? We've got an, S an AWS SDK plugin now, an okay. AWS SDK API plugin. We could shrink the size of that large separate plugin by 10 or 20 megabytes by depending on the Jenkins S AWS SDK API oh, yeah. plugin. Oh, wow. Yes. And <laughs> instead of, so then if there's ever a security problem in the AWS SDK API, all we do is fix it in one plugin instead of having to re-release a whole bunch of plugins that include that thing. So this was one, oh, wow, I hadn't thought it. So, so these kind of things. Okay. Then enable continuous delivery, migrate documentation, improve pipeline documentation. Any mo other modernization ideas that come to your mind of things where, oh, when you're, when you're modernizing a plugin, you should do this. Um... And I was like on the spot, like trying to think of something. Um, yeah, and that's okay. Just, okay. Like, just you know. so maybe, maybe what maybe what I should do is instead, if you would be willing, put it in the back of your mind. Okay, sure. And if something comes to your mind, please send me a note saying, "Hey, Mark, I thought of this," because because what I would like to do with this long table of contents thing is what I envisioned is creating a tutorial on Jenkins.io a developer tutorial called modernizing Jenkins, modernizing, modernizing a plugin sure. and put each of these steps as a separate little page that says, Hey, here are things you can do. And then if we get bright ideas of, oh, I'd like to do this thing, I think we should add this. We can just add them to the list. Yeah. That sounds like a good idea. Yeah. Cool. I think any way to be able to get people to, because it is intimidating to just see 
plugins up for adoption. I don't know if there's even like a better, like it's good that we have a whole bunch. I don't know if there's some that are like better candidates than others as well. Um, but yeah. I, and and that's, a, that's a good point. Certainly I have to admit, I was very careful when I selected the plugin that I wanted to adopt. Sure. <laughs> right. Because yes. there are a hundred of them to choose from. Yeah. I went and chose one that was relatively small, low volume that I thought might be interesting to me and yet was not going to endanger other people. So I didn't right. pick Apache HTTP components, for instance, because that thing is used by pretty much every installation of Jenkins anywhere. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm like, I wonder if there's any page that would be figure out You know, like figure out if your plugin is critical to somebody or like some other plugin or kind of like figure out where how do how your plugin fits with everything else but i'm not sure of a good way to do that right now well, well and and certainly there is so let's we one of the things we can use is we look here and we see okay what are my dependents first right first what's my install count mm -hmm. six digit install oh. count probably means people are using this thing heavily right Right. So, so if, if you say, I want to be fairly inconspicuous, I don't want to be very visible, right. <laughs> then choosing one with a six digit, six digit install count is not going to be quiet. That's not a, that's not low visibility. Exactly. The other is the dependencies tab here gives us a hint of, oh, here's what's required. And here's, here are the things that might depend. Here's how you would no, there isn't. Oh, no, there is. So it's just, this one's actually got relatively few dependencies. I'm yeah, impressed. I, like, oh, I expected so. many more. <laughs> Me too. I was like, um, actually, th th thinking about this, um, is, do we have a thing how to install Dependabot or any of the other? Um... We, we do. It's, okay, good, there, good. So there's as a long as it's in the documentation. This one, Automate Dependency Perfect. Update Checks, okay. is Dependabot. Right. Now, what I don't have, that's a good point. You just, thank you for saying it. I don't have Enable Release Drafter. Yes. There we go. That's a good one. So let's put that one in here because enable release drafter. We, we actually have a video that shows how to do that for change log automation. Perfect. And we can already depend, use a lot of the presets from different Jenkins plugins so that will save it, but it's important. Yes, <laughs> right, exactly. See, well, and there's a, there's a release drafter page on the Jenkins CI slash dot github repository uh, and there's a video on the jenkins youtube channel and the 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 writing on the on the github repository is really very very clear and very helpful okay actually let me just put it in there jenkins let's see github.com Jenkins CI slash dot GitHub. I was just reading this today. I was really, truly impressed. Dot GitHub, release drafter dot a doc. Here is this beautiful document with table of contents that describes how you enable it. It has links to videos that describe it, everything. Okay, and that was where, where was I taking those notes? Oh, I was in this document, wasn't I? Here, okay. Okay, good. So we just added one more section. All right. So again, Kristen, if you're willing, if ideas come to mind, by all means, please, um, please add them sure. or add comments or suggestions there. And okay. then Diraj, you and I will try to do this. If you're okay helping me with this, we'll try to craft this together as a, as a both a combined blog post and a, a tutorial. I would love to help. This is definitely really interesting. Great. Thank you. So, so we'll, and, and I think, I think what I may do, I wonder, Diraj, maybe you and I want to collaborate through a separate repository and then, because then I can give you right permission to it. 
and then we'll we'll grab it together, get it together, and I'll I'll send you a link because I've got a little a little Git a Git server that I run on my own my own network. So I may send you a uh, here you can log into this location and we'll collaborate there. Uh, that's interesting, even though I don't have experience like different repository. Yeah, so, this this will be. If if nothing else, it will prove to me that Giddy is every bit as easy to understand as GitHub is, because I I I use this Giddy server all the time. It works great, so I'll I'll send you a, a link to it and we'll start there. That's awesome. Sure. Okay. All right. So, Mark and Diraj create the tutorial and a blog post. For the modernizing, we get modernizing a plugin tutorial for modernizing a plugin. Okay. All right. Thanks, all of you, for being so patient for such a long and terrible docs office hours. Any other topics we need to go over today? No, nothing from my side. Nope, me either. Okay, don't forget to register to vote in the Jenkins elections, and we'll call this done for today. Thanks very much. All right, thanks. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.